Football Guys Talking Basketball, FGTB. So we're going to be talking about the Thunder a lot mm. over the next few weeks. That's what happens when you're the number one <laughs> seed. Uh, th- dude, it's just, it's so awesome. And shout out to the San Antonio Spurs. I mean, just pulling off a stunning win against the Nuggets on Friday night that opened the door for this to happen for the Thunder. And I, I just thought there was no way Denver was going to lose that game, Ted. But here we are, just dismantled the G-leaguers that the Mavericks sent out on the floor on Sunday. Went and watched that travesty. That was, oh, it was gross. <laughs> but hey, it was more of just a celebration in Paycom Center. Ted, how about this? The number one seed in the West. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, I know we talked about it a lot, but the win total was like what forty four, something like that. And I told, and I told our listeners, you better hammer that over. I told hammer you, it. Um, it all came together really nicely. Yeah, the, and they had some guys in and out of the lineup, but they've stayed healthy. They're going into the playoffs healthy. Feels like they they've got some of their rotation stuff figured out. So, man. The one seed is is it's awesome to be able to to pull off that accomplishment, but now uh now's where where it all counts. We'll see what see what it's all about in the playoffs, man. I only have one story from the Dallas game that I think you you and a lot of other parents would appreciate. So weird tip time, two thirty, right? All the Western Conference games were be getting played at two thirty, which I love that the NBA does that so that no team can try to maneuver, even though I'm sure there's some scoreboard watching going on some of those benches. But I we my, we woke my son up at two o'clock, right? It's normally the game is right the right in the middle of his normal nap window. Okay. So we tried to get him down for his nap a little earlier. Woke him up at two o'clock, got him changed, got in the car, headed straight to the arena. Well, he wanted a snack in the car on the way to the arena. No problem. Of course. Get, He loves these little bars. There's just like these little protein bars. He hammers them all the time. Normally takes him, I don't know, 10 seconds to eat it. Like he just destroys these things and give him one in the car. Think nothing of it. Get to the arena, get parked, take him out, holding them. Wearing a white polo. Chocolate from the bar all over his fingers. And what does he do, Ted? Just straight across the polo, just uses <laughs> my shirt as a napkin, and then like looks at me like, "Hey, yeah, I'm cleaning my hands off." And I was just like, "What are you doing, dude? What oh are my you?" Gosh, I, that's great. Had to go straight in, straight to the bathroom, try to clean it off as much as possible. Just had giant wet spots on my shirt. My wife's like, "Let's just buy around. you a t-shirt." I was like, "I don't want a t-shirt." <laughs> Ended up drying and it looked okay. We'll see. We'll see if we can get the chocolate out. Shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, that's that's about the most entertaining thing that happened in that basketball game. Hey, those stains are from when the Thunder secured the one seed. Hey, that's a good look at you, Mister Positivity. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. So Thunder don't know their opponent yet, and won't know until April nineteenth. Uh, I, the Thunder did announce game one of their opening round series will be played on Sunday, April 21st time to be determined. So you look at the play in situation in the Western conference, you got the Pelicans and Lakers in the seven, eight game. Uh, The winner of that game will be the seven seed and we'll play Denver. Whoever loses that game will then play the winner of the nine, 10 game, which is Sacramento and golden state. So the loser of the 7-8 plays the winner of the 9-10, and whoever wins that game, that will be the 8 seed, and that is who the Thunder will have in the opening round. Everyone got it? Got it. I feel like you are studying, trying to figure out who you would prefer it would be. Well, I feel like the Lakers are going to throw the game against the Pelicans. and then play the winner of SAC and, and Golden State to try and play the Thunder. I want Golden State. 
I, it would just feel right. And yeah. I know that there's also the possibility that they shoot 50% from three in a series and you get knocked out in round one. But can you imagine how much fun it would be to knock Draymond Green out in the first round? It would be awesome, but you're you're wagering a lot of emotion on that too because the other side of that is the worst ever. I, I think that, you know, Sacramento has given the Thunder trouble over the years. So I, I don't think there's an easy matchup. Right. Pelicans have Zion and CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram just came back. Lakers have LeBron and Anthony Davis. Their team is huge. They've given the Thunder all kinds of problems this year when they've played. Uh, Golden State, Steph Curry, you can you can just never count him out with what he can do with the three. I, there's not a good option, but this is something that it made me feel better about everything because I, I don't think you could be – you can't be scared if you're a Thunder fan. We know the players, that they're, they're not going to be scared, but you can't be scared right. as a Thunder fan because I saw this debate going on. Do we really want the number one seed? Listen, there's one team in the NBA that's got a better better home record than the Thunder, and it's the Boston Celtics. That's it. That's the list. Mm -hmm. The Thunder are 33-8 and eight at home. Give me this team at home against whoever. You got to beat everyone anyways. That's true. Might as well. Yeah, Boston was 37-4. and four. Only only team better than the Thunder. Thunder and the Nuggets, both 33 and 8 at home. So whoever comes out of this playoff play in thing, man, I just you can't you can't be scared if you're a Thunder fan. You just gotta embrace it and know that th this team plays their best basketball in that building. Yeah. Yep. No, I I totally agree. I'm I'm fairly confident with anyone but the Lakers. <laughs> That's the only team I'm not confident with. Yeah. But I, other than that, you know, I I feel pretty good about it. Mark Dagnall is going to be the NBA coach of the year. Been impressive. Number one seed in the West. It, the the two-year improvement for this organization, especially the way that they've done it, that's, I, I think that's the most impressive thing. Two seasons ago, they won 24 games. They just won 57. How do you I mean, think? 33 ahead, win improvement in two years. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and with no, with no big free agency signings. This was all through the draft and with guys that were already there that were playing in Oklahoma city that season. I mean, this is a result of drafting Jalen Williams and the other Jalen Williams. And of course, Chet and case and Wallace, what he, what he's done in his rookie year. Stuff like this just really doesn't happen in the NBA. So that's, it just makes it even more, it makes it more fun. And it just makes it more incredible, man. Yeah. Where do you think Dagnall's made his biggest impression on the team? Like what? I, what? What can you point to and say like that's his impact? It was pretty funny uh, the other night, and, and I don't know from just from what high level basketball people say about him when it comes to X's and O's, offensively and defensively. I think he's really, really good at like scheme. I think he's yeah. really, really good at scheme, but they were playing when they played Milwaukee. We went to that game on Friday night. I think he wanted Shea to hold the ball for like a last, and I think it was at the end of the third quarter. And he just started yelling at him. Like, what are you doing? Why are you shooting the ball? Right. Why did you do that? And like Shea was saying something back to him. But I, I just think there, there's some small moments where I think the dude is, he's got like a, an intensity about him that maybe we don't get to see that often, but I think he holds every guy in the locker room accountable. 
Yeah. That was one of those moments where I saw it. I just went, whoa, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he is, he's not afraid, but I, I think the thing that you hear the most, the most complimentary things about him is, is the scheme stuff. Yeah. I wish I knew more basketball scheme stuff. I wish I knew what to study well, when it comes to all that stuff, but I just, I don't, I don't. I would say that it's from a, another non-basketball guy. It's apparent that they know their pieces and it feels like with the spacing and the offense, like they, it feels like they do a really good job of getting the most out of each player's skill set. And I don't know that that's always the case in the NBA. And it feels like it is with the Thunder. I will say there's been, you think about, especially early in the season, it's kind of just been the the entire season. A lot of people that have a lot of opinions about the Thunder, about, hey, they need to have more size. The rebounding is an issue. And to Dagnalt's credit, and it's probably, it may be more Sam Presti than Dagnalt, but they've just kind of stuck with those guys. Didn't. Yeah. Well, didn't make a big move at the trade deadline. They got the Hayward deal done, but a lot of guy, a lot of people wanted them to go get a big man, and maybe that'll end up being a massive issue, and maybe that'll end up being the reason that they have an early exit from the playoffs. That that's very possible, but you secure the number one seed doing it your way. So I, I don't know. I I think he deserves some credit for. You know, knowing what the weaknesses are, but also kind of just embracing and really leaning into the way that they want to play and kind of the style of basketball that they they think is best. Yeah, I'm curious to see, you know, analytically, and I don't know how big they are in the analytics. I know everyone uses them to some degree, but over a long season, I think it's a lot easier to say, if we stick with this, this, and this over the long haul, we will be right. And we'll have more wins than if we try to adjust that. I wonder how that plays in the playoffs where it feels like it's a much more by possession, by possession game, especially in the second half. It feels like things slow down, grind to a halt. And I don't know. I'm just curious to see how this, the Thunder team responds to a, a little bit different environment. If it turns into a slower half court game, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Jay Gilgis Alexander is one of the best house court players in the world. And, and the Thunder's ball movement, the way that they share the basketball, their movement off the ball. I think that I, I think they can play in an up tempo game and I think they can playing a game that kind of grinds to a halt. You just got to got to rebound it well enough and not give up a gajillion second chance points. So yeah. we'll, we'll see, but why isn't Shea Gilgis Alexander going to win the MVP? Third leading scorer in the league has been a much better defensive player this year. Thunder, the number one seed. What am I missing? Yeah, Jokic is incredible. Jokic is incredible. I, I I don't know how impactful that loss Denver had and the fact that they're not the number one seed. I, I don't know how much weight that's going to carry with voters, but I, I just don't see – I don't really see why Shea shouldn't at least finish second. Yeah. I don't know. I I get is it I mean people that follow the NBA should know I mean they know by now but I guess my my only knock and it's not really a knock but hey you know how the NBA is with the whole earn it thing and and go and and have a big impact in the playoffs I don't know. Is that even something that you knock someone with, with the season that he's had? I would say no. Doesn't have anything to do with this season and the numbers that he's put up. So 
that would be the only thing I could come up with to play uh, devil's advocate. Yeah. I, I don't think he's going to win, but uh, I think it's silly how he's kind of been ignored from some of those conversations over the last couple of weeks. It just, it's just stupid to me. Yeah. Uh, last thing. Chet Holmgren misses his first season. All these people start talking about, hey, he's too skinny. Uh, he's going to, we're worried about the feet now. It, what happens if he turns out to be super injury prone? All he did was play all 82 games this year. So shout out to Chet Holmgren. That's, that's big time, man. That is, yeah. it's not easy to do. And that's a hell of an accomplishment. And he's going to get, I, I feel like he's one of those guys that, you're going to have like five or six years of development before he hits his full potential. He's still incredibly young. So I think, I think he is elite right now as a rim protector elite. One of the best in the league. I think the shooting is going to improve. I, I think he's going to find some, some different types of shots around the basket that are going to be some go-tos. I, I think his offensive game is going to develop a ton from where it's at right now, but at the very least, if he's just an elite rim protector for his career, like he's, he's a hell of a basketball player. He's been, he has yep. been awesome on the defensive end this year. Yep. No, I'm, I'm excited for him. He's going to be great. Uh, one interesting thing. Wednesday's episode uh, ran into our buddy, Tim McMahon from ESPN. Uh, a lot of guys that, you know, listen to the Hoop Collective, know who Tim McMahon is, or you listen to the Low Post, you know who Tim McMahon is. Possibly joining us on Wednesday for a little Love playoff it. preview. Love it. Tim's awesome. Good so, dude. So we 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 may be diving into some high-level hoops. We'll let McMahon explain everything to us. We'll let him do the heavy <laughs> lifting. 